The vaccine volume debate. We give the same volume of vaccine to little poodles as we do to Great Danes. That's causing more vaccines out of effects and that's something that needs to change. Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Click there to subscribe. Hit the bell to sign up for notifications. Then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book. Imagine you have two dogs and they're going to see your veterinarian. You've got a note in the mail. They're due for boosters. So you bring in number one, Andrew, me, who happens to be about the size of a Great Dane. And number two, little Tula. Yeah, what is she? Like 20-ish pounds, a little poodle. Your friendly vet says, here's what Andrew the Great Dane is gonna get. Yeah, it looks like a lot, it's a big dog. But little Tula, she's about a tenth of the size of Andrew the Great Dane. She's gonna get the same volume of vaccine. It does seem kind of crazy to be giving equivalent volume to like a dog that's 10 times the size to like, you know, a little miniature poodle. Like, what is that? If you were to have any of the COVID-19 vaccines along with the booster, you probably noticed that when you came time to your third booster shot, you got half the dose of volume of vaccine. Hmm. Thought I'd go on the internet, turn to the experts, and according to the American Animal Hospital Association's AHA, they say this, the vaccine dose is not based on volume per body mass size, but rather on the minimum immunizing dose. They also state that in addition, reducing the volume of the vaccine dose has not been shown to reduce the risk of an acute adverse reaction or enhance safety. I hope that's completely factual. I mean, these guys are the experts on veterinary vaccines, right? Like, clearly they must be most knowledgeable of all the current research and, you know, what they say is fact. Hmm. Turns out you can do a little bit more research and find out that there actually was a 2005 retrospective study. So what they looked at is over a million animals being vaccinated with over 3 million vaccine doses. And what they found was that there was actually a direct correlation between the incidence of adverse events and the size of the dog. Meaning Andrew the Great Dane is less likely to have a vaccine reaction than Tula the Poodle. Go figure. Because actually it makes sense to me. Like I get this giant volume because I'm a big Great Dane. Give the same amount to little teeny Tula. Makes sense she's going to much more likely have a bigger reaction. One of the big limitations of these pre-vaccine trials, they're just looking at vaccinating the average dog. So what is he, like 40, 50 pound dog? They're not looking at the toys. And they're looking at a small number of animals before they can get you know, fully licensed and start vaccinating hundreds of millions of dogs worldwide. They even claim that many breeds and dogs of various sizes, i.e. they were small toy guys, they may have been really underrepresented in the initial study. Yeah, here we are based on that study saying like every animal, regardless of size, they're gonna get that one cc volume of vaccine. Hmm. They claim in this retrospective study that they actually had a relatively small amount of adverse events. They're claiming on average it's about like 0.4%, so it's about 40 animals for every thousand animals that are vaccinated. But it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out like this escalating incidence of autoimmune related diseases. Look at all of our dogs with allergies, for instance. Why do we have so many animals with allergies? Hmm. We've overstimulated their immune system. Hmm. Turn our little poodle here into an allergic poodle with chronic licking, scratching, hair loss, odor, smell, ear infections. What it does tell me is that before these blanket statements get made, like there really needs to be some type of studies. Like seriously? Like don't tell me that like these multi, multi billion dollar pharmaceutical companies can't fund some studies on vaccine volume. Like really? Number two, I mean, give your dog, give your cat, give them less vaccines. Give them less often and just give them the vaccines that they're gonna need to protect themselves against the most common infectious diseases. I've done some previous videos on this, but in the description box, I'll put in my suggested vaccine regimen for puppies and for kittens. If you've got a smaller dog, you have a cat, you're going in for your vaccines, you need to discuss with your veterinarian about decreasing the volume. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Seekers of the vaccine volume debate. More importantly, how things to change. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click the link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.